Art in the Aftermath, Making Sense of 2020. The elections are over, and for those of us who prefer our facts without alternatives, the future looks brighter for artists. This is what the Biden-Harris platform has to say. The arts are essential to our free and democratic society, to our culture, and to our local economies. Democrats are proud of our support for arts funding and education, and will continue policies and programs that promote the creative arts. We value the arts and art education for developing imagination, creativity, innovation, and critical thinking skills in students, and for building bridges between people and communities across the country and around the world. By contrast, the Republican Party platform for 2020, a rerun from 2016, doesn't mention the arts at all. It feels like years rather than months since our vibrant art communities grounded to a halt. We fought our isolation and loneliness by creating art. To express our horror at the murder of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and so many others. And to call attention to the unprecedented importance of voting. The arts are our voice. Now, many of us are elated, but exhausted. Filled with hope and gratitude, but wondering when life will reset to normal. It's going to be okay, we tell each other. Keep moving forward.
Just freaking out a little, but honestly, it'd be nice to have a break from work and focus on writing. I'm actually sort of excited. Do dogs understand humans? I have no money, and I really want to evade my taxes. I love Jeff. I have writer's block. Should I become a real estate agent? I have no idea what day it is. I sort of like this mask thing. I hate Jeff. Everyone is pregnant. I'm drinking way too much. I 
played like 800 crossovers. I am fucking mad. I wonder. Did the neighbors hear me and Jeff screaming at each other last night? <laughs> I cut my hair. Does that mean I'm halfway to crazy? It's official. I actually rewatched the entire Lost series. I wish that there was something that I could do to make everything better. I mean, there are things, and I do them, but it doesn't feel like enough. Never forget the fly on Pence's head. I think I gained a lot of weight. I actually started reading some of those self-help books that have been sitting on my shelf for years. Haven't seen my friends or family in months, starting to feel like this will never end. What is street art? Well, to put it simply, art on the street. Or thoroughly defined as, by me, street art. Noun. A visual or performing art slash talent that inhabits a street or urban environment. A phenomenon existing arguably as long as cavemen. There's a widely known art form of graffiti, sculptures and stencils, tags, sticker art, poster art, singing and dancing, and any instrument you can imagine. There's Banksy, Basquiat, Keith Haring, and Cause, saxophonist Leo P., to name a few. In retrospect, for as long as I can remember, street art has been prevalent in the cityscape around me, from the tags scribbled down poles to mysterious full graffiti in the tunnels of the subway. I've listened to numerous saxophonists, singers, street performers of all sorts in the mornings and evenings, acting as personal alarm clocks or serenaders. Each artist unique, all pertinent in the vibrant city of New York. Where did this cultural staple of New York come from? The history of street art stems way back. Busking, noun. As defined by our good friend Google, the activity of playing music in the street or another public place for voluntary donations. As stated in Passing the Hat, Street Performers in America by Patricia J. Campbell, there have been street performers at least as long as there have been streets. Previously labeled as troubadours and jonglers in France, the art form is as ancient as the streets themselves. All that said, every day I walk past people making a living from what they love. Though most people overlook it, for some, this is their livelihoods. I want to capture some of the stories of people who helped make New York City an urban epicenter of art.